aeronautical knowledge is a fundamental, you know, you can say pillar, bedrock, foundation, or whatever, to good airmanship. You need to have it in order to develop good airmanship and be a good aviator. And for many of us, it's likely been a while since we've reviewed some of these subject areas, maybe even back when we did our pilot certificate, you know, private pilot, commercial, whatever it may be. Maybe also update you a little bit on what is out there and what is new. Give yourself the opportunity to see where you stand with other GA pilots, you know. It's, they're all not going to be identical to you, but when we look at the whole of the general aviation pilot population, it'll help you understand where you fit in and maybe what you're good at, maybe what you need to work on a little bit. And, you know, help you be proficient, to be all that you can be to gain that knowledge. And to lastly, make it available for you and others. So a few little things, we're gonna get started right about now on the questions, but due to limitations on the poll questions, we do use abbreviations and shorthand extensively. You might want to have had additional answers, but we're limited to five. There are a few questions out here and I'll try to highlight them to you that there's more than one correct answer. And do understand it will be a little bit fast paced. Now we're gonna take a look a little bit at loss of control. And this might be a bit staggering to all of us. I know putting it together, it definitely caught my attention. So we'll jump right in to the first question. I'm gonna share this. All right, John, what do we got? Okay, there is an average of one fatal accident involving loss of control every how many days? All right, and that poll's getting distributed now. So I'll read through the question and the answers. There is an average of one fatal, and I think fatal is the key word there, one fatal accident involving loss of control every how many days? And uh, every one day, 8% of you chose that. Every three days, 40% of you chose that. Every four days, 16% of you chose that. In every five days, 36% uh, of you chose that. And I can tell you, and I'll wait for Steve to come back to give you the answer, but I can tell you that loss of control as, an, an, as a causal factor with aircraft accidents is the number one causal factor, not just in my district, the Portland, Maine district, which covers Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, um, not just in um, um, Rob and Dan's district, which, which covers um, Western Massachusetts and uh, Connecticut, and not just in Steve's district, which covers Eastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. It's, it's a national problem. It's the number one causal factor in general aviation accidents on a nationwide basis. Well, John, you're giving away a future answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that is that is a very, very true statement. And this is a big surprise to me. I am back, as you can tell. But here we go. I the correct answer on this one, as it is getting out there, is once every four days on average, you know, we're having a fatal accident that is based upon loss of control of the aircraft. That is just that amazed me, you know. I I know I look at the accident reports at least weekly, but I'm looking at it even more than that. And that was a big, big surprise to me. All right, let's go on to the next one. Loss of control is the number what? <laughs> of fatal GA accidents. Number one, number two, number three, or number four cause of fatal GA. GA accidents. So if you would answer there, you know, is this where we stomp the foot, John? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Oops. laughs> no, 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 that's great. That's what this section is, is that, you know, this is a section that you don't see a lot of this written about, especially in the primary training um, documentation that we have in the FA. But boy, all of us are talking about this all of the time out there with GA pilots. I, I mean, I know all the outreach I'm doing, Dan, you, John, this is what we're always talking about. Go ahead and close this one and I'll share that. And what do we got? Yeah, uh, number one got 93% and number two got 3%, number three got uh, 2% and number four got 1%. Yeah, it is. It's 
loss of control is the number one cause of our fatal accidents. Not all our accidents necessarily, but of our fatal accidents, you know, and you find this, this is in one of our pamphlets that we share about it. We share it on the fast team quite often, you know, fly safe pamphlet. Uh, when you take a look at some of our recent studies. Uh, yeah, and the, the interesting thing there, Steve, is like the loss of control in flight versus loss of control on the ground, and most of the fatals are loss of control in flight. And you know, you just hit the ground at high energy and out of control, and it's 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 a nasty combination. Yes, yes, that is very true, and we'll, we'll discuss that here in a little, little bit more coming up is the next one should be a good foot stomping type of question is xyz that's where you'll put in your answer was the leading category in fatal accidents during flight training with a total of 129 fatal accidents 54 percent and this was in a study that was done that covered the years 2000 to 2015 on flight training so i'm going to go ahead and open that one up And sending that out, if you would, take the time to answer. And this is an interesting one. If you're an instructor or even if you've been through flight training, but I this study was recently published in about the past year or so. Uh, and I sat down and I read it more than once you know i've done a lot of training as an instructor over the years and it was an eye opener uh some of the things like even being in the faa and safety not safety oriented i i nodded at there were a few others that kind of made me go huh that's interesting all right so if you would give it your best answer what you believe it is okay the leading cause of uh fatal accidents during flight training in flight training now um, loss of control, 68%, mid-air collision, 9%, uh, percent, controlled flight into train, 18%, fuel-related, 5%. Oops, there we go. Got to unclick the mic. Loss of control was number one is the correct answer. And this is out of the fatal flight training accident report covering those years. This was uh, produced in association with the FAA, but by Liberty University and AOPA. And actually, what I gave you was the top four in the order is loss of control in flight, as John was saying, was the largest with 129 fatal accidents. Uh, that was 54% of those fatal accidents in flight training found in this study. The next highest, which is actually very interesting, uh, was mid-air collisions. Uh, there were 24 you know, fatal accidents with mid-air collisions in a 15-year period associated with flight training. I have seen and dealt with and even lost people I know in accidents based upon both of those, but in terms of mid-air collisions. But I never would have guessed that there were that many over a 15-year period. Controlled flight into terrain, that was another one that surprised me. You know, and then even fuel-related. But look at how big the loss of control is in those. Really was an eye opener. Right. The next one, and this is a good one that a lot of us have been starting to discuss on, is historically the FAA emphasis on loss of control at the classic base to final stall. But recent trends have been indicating more fatalities during this phase of flight. I'll launch that one. If you would, vote early, vote often. Let's see what you think. We're getting a lot of good answers on this one. I, I like this. I, I, think, I think you're up on this. <laughs> so I will ask, vote early, vote often. Give it your best guess. There is no necessarily right or wrong. What this does is it gives you the opportunity to learn and see where you stand in relation to other pilots. So you know please do not hesitate in guessing if you are giving it your best guess all right we're up there i'm going to close this one and i'm going to share it okay cruise flight got one percent emergency procedures got four percent and takeoff climb and go arounds got 95 percent excellent that is 
that is terrific because we are taking a look at that. And, you know, you were, I think, talking about it a little bit. If you take a look here, this is one of the charts out of uh, this study is take off and climb was this many go arounds where, you know, our downwind and base was and final were these smaller numbers, but added up. But then also what they found, which they discuss in this study, is many of these in maneuvering were actually still at some portion of the climb out after takeoff, uh, although the NTSB had kind of categorized them as maneuvering. You know, that they may have been in an earlier turn in the uh, crosswind leg of the pattern or something like that. And, and we definitely see that, I, I think, all of us, is loss of control by far is the most prevalent thing that we see in the accidents and incidents. Coming in for landing, more often than not, what we end up only dealing with is bent metal, bent airplanes on the landing portion because it's a low energy state. Usually it's not going bad until they're very close to the ground. Um, you know, energy is being dissipated versus added. So usually on the landing portion, it's the loss of control on a crosswind or something off on the side of the runway. You know, some bumps and bruises on the airplane, maybe a bump or bruise on the pilot, but the airplanes usually fare worse on the landing ones. Take off climb, go around, it tends to be the other way. It tends to be catastrophic for the aircraft and it tends to be catastrophic uh, loss of control for the occupants and pilots in the aircraft. And that's because usually we're at a little bit higher altitude, you know, with more total in, or more potential energy. And we're usually climbing with full power, adding quite a bit of kinetic energy at that time too. Terrific. All right. One more on loss of control, I believe. We'll launch that. An FAA study found that loss of control accident fatalities were XYZ percentage more than the second leading cause, which was controlled flight into terrain. And this is out of an older FAA study uh, in the 2001 to 2010 timeframe, and it was not just on flight training. This was for all general aviation. So you're not gonna see this too often, but this may be an eye opener to all of us. It was to me. We got about 185 of you out there online right now. We got about 75%, oh, now up to 80 on that. I'm gonna close and share it. There you go. Okay. Yeah, we got 100%, the answer 100%, 14% of you chose that, 200%, 31% chose, it's a tie, two answer 100%, 31% chose, and 500%, 24% chose. Yeah, so kind of, across the board on that one, definitely. <laughs> yeah, the popular answers were 200 and 300% at yep. a tie. And out of this study that the FAA did back in the um, 2001 to 2000 timeframe, it's 300%, you know, so for every CFIT, there was three, I will try hiding that again. Let's see if, it comes up. All right. Yeah. So 300%, you know, is really was an eye opener to me in that time frame. You know, so for every one on CFIT, we were looking at three loss of control events.